Breast cancer, of course, is the most common cancer affecting Australian women. This year, more than 15,000 women will be diagnosed and one in eight will be diagnosed before the age of 85. There's an 89% survival rate these days, Joni. Yes, uh, within five years, but uh, unfortunately not everyone is so lucky. Daily Telegraph sports writer and our member of Weekend Edition, uh, Matt Logue, lost his mother to breast cancer six days before Christmas and he joins us now to pay tribute to his mum. Thank you so much for coming in this morning and sharing your personal and emotional story. Very, very sad to hear the news of your mum's passing. Do you mind telling us a little bit about her journey? Yeah, um, Beryl, um, born in Gilgandra mm -hmm. in country New South Wales and um, was raised on a small farm out near Tottenham where at the moment the drought is really bad at, at the moment. And um, she yeah, she's actually, was actually a dressmaker by trade and lived in Sydney for a period where she worked in Double Bay and made a, a replica of uh, Princess Diana's um, wedding dress and um, it actually won an award. And um, But just a, a loving mother, spent the rest of her life um, in, in Dubbo, um, passionate about the community out there and the, the soccer club and particularly my little brother Steve plays for the Dubbo Bulls and um, at the funeral it was fantastic to see the whole club turn up in orange um, with a guard of honour um, and yeah that, that's special and I think yeah you're right the, the timing it's never perfect but I think it helps knowing the community support and you really see that in country towns like Dubbo where people come together and I think that's helped we've had People cook home cook meals and you get home um, and there's, you know, food on the fence ready to go for you that someone's just dropped off. Um, so, that, you know, that is remarkable and it just highlights um, the importance of the community but also, as you say, with breast cancer and cancer in general, the need to support and help others now. The, there's a beautiful shot there of your mum at, at the wedding with yeah. you and Sam and Sam's due in a few weeks' time. Mm. Uh, I lost my mother. We had a good chat at the Sydney Test match, not yeah. so and that was before last Christmas. And nothing can prepare you for it. And a lot of people want to just sometimes say, oh, you'll get over it. And I, I don't think you do. I, I think you find a new normal. Um, you, you want to live to their legacy because that's the way they want you to live, I'm sure. But Absolutely. you find a new normal, don't you? Yeah, you really do. Uh, and I think you want to make them proud. And mum was just so caring. She always thought of others. I remember she was in hospital a couple of days before she did um, pass and um, she was talking about donating money to kids in Africa. Mm. Like, I'm going, well, you've got your own problems and you're thinking about others. And I think that was highlighted, um, Timmy, at that at test match, the, the pink day. And it just felt fitting to be there because the whole reason for that day is to raise money and awareness for cancer, but also the breast care nurses mm. who do so much work. And they helped mum, like, it was, it was amazing what they did for mum behind the scenes. Little things like cleaning the house, turning up and being a moral support and walking in that day for, for that test match and, uh, you know, pink everywhere. And I actually donated um, just $10 on my card, you can these days. And, um, oh yeah, I got emotional. It was just, it, it just hit me. It was just like, wow, like this is, this is perfect. This is what mum would have wanted me to be here on this day. And... In the crowd, I'm sure, there's so many people who have been impacted by cancer and are still being impacted by cancer. So um, I got to write a story and a, and a tribute to Mum on the Day and, um, and obviously interview Glenn McGrath, who, um, you know, proud narrow-mind boy who's been the, the set-up of the Jane McGrath Foundation. And a big part of that is Jane wanted to help people in regional areas. 75% mm. of breast care nurses are in regional areas like Dubbo because they don't have the support of a big metropolitan place like Sydney. And they're and like guardian what, angels, aren't they? Yeah, they, they really are. They, I think they call themselves the pink angels mm. in Dubbo and shout out to those guys. Like, they do amazing work. And so I almost felt... I don't know, like it was just meant to be that I was writing a story about mum and, and, and talking about cancer to help someone else. I know she wasn't there that day, but it just felt like she was. Mm. Yeah, and as you mentioned, it is about that whole support, isn't it? You wrote in your article that there was no place in the world that you would prefer to be than the, uh, than the uh, McGrath Pink Test uh, day three. And as you mentioned with the nurses, I'm sure that there's that bond not only with your mum, but you and the family that, yeah. that you have basically for, for right then and... and Forever. Oh yeah, um, big shout out to Margie Collins. Um, mm. She's the breast care nurse, rather in Dubbo, and she's from Narromine, where Glenn McGrath's from, from. And when I interviewed Glenn, I mentioned Margie, and he goes, "Oh, I was only speaking to her this week," which is just mm. amazing. The connections in life, and um, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic what. 
Glenn um, has been able to do through the setup of the foundation, but there's work to be done. There's still, I think, roughly 125 more nurses that they need in different areas, um, and they're looking to really get into those areas to try and make a difference. So, um, yeah, anything I can do moving forward to promote cancer and help someone else, uh, that's that's what I'm going to aim to do. Yeah, well, it's great to, great to talk to you today, and I, I loved your article, and I loved chatting with you the other day. Uh, look, a lot of people say the current society we live in is bad because of this and that and the mm. other things. But one, a lot of great things, and one of the really good things is the fact that men like you and I and others, hopefully, are talking about subjects more than we ever did. And mm. you get so much out of having a discussion in and around tragedy and other things that happen in your own life. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I think, particularly in regional areas, sometimes you see... I've seen firsthand how people keep things to themselves, particularly for blokes that you don't really talk. And, but I think that's slowly changing and, and that's great to see because if we can make a difference with cancer in general, because um, my, my father also had cancer a couple of years ago, prostate. Uh, my mother-in-law at the moment, um, she had breast cancer a couple of years ago and mm. defeated it. I think Sammy and I have had cancer on both sides of the mm. family. So the more discussions that can be had to help people, um, you don't have to be suffering silence, um, then I think that's the better. And that's certainly what mum would have wanted is to, to help others. Well, thank you so much again for coming in and sharing your personal story. Of course, you've got your bub who is due in about five weeks. Yeah, five weeks. So, um, yeah, I'm sure mum will be watching on, little girl. So... Um, yeah, I'll be ready to go. I'm sure I'll be a doting dad. So looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, there is some <laughs> nappy changing practices. and I need some practice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that way it'll come thick and fast. <laughs> Maddie, great to talk to you Thank as you always. So much. Pleasure. Thank All you. All right, love Thanks to Sam. You.